Congress came to Notre Dame in 1964, the people wondered why Navy was on the schedule. And why they were on the schedule is a story in itself. The real uh, ties that bind between Notre Dame and Navy occurred during World War II. During the war years, the Navy was down because all the Navy midshipmen and so forth were out fighting a war. And Notre Dame was having their own problems during the war as far as attendance and so forth. As World War II began to escalate, Notre Dame's president, Father Hugh O'Donnell, wrote a letter requesting to the armed forces that they can use Notre Dame's uh, facilities as a training ground if necessary. Navy responded to that call. The V-12 program opened up on July 1st, 1943 at Notre Dame with 1,851 active seamen. To put that in perspective, there were only 700 civilian students enrolled at Notre Dame at the time. In the classrooms, in the laboratories, in the Naval ROTC unit, in the whole physical arrangement of the self-contained city, which is Notre Dame. So they had a great relationship with Navy. And let's also remember this, that during World War II, financially, we didn't have the great support. And so the Navy, in supporting this program, really kept Notre Dame afloat at that time. The unselfish devotion of those who helped to bring us this far must not be in vain. Father Hesburgh, who passed away this past February, always maintained that as long as Navy wants to be on the schedule, they will always have a place on the Notre Dame schedule because of what it meant to the university during that time in World War II when it would have been really in financial straits without them and Father Hesburgh even said the doors would have been closed. You know, one of the interesting things about this series is that right at the time when Notre Dame was probably in its lowest valley, Navy was at its peak. Navy sails into Notre Dame Stadium labeled the fourth finest team in the nation. A sellout crowd will witness the 37th renewal of the Navy Notre Dame series, which is the longest continuous intersectional rivalry in collegiate football. The last time they had won was 1963 when Roger Staubach had won and he won the Heisman that year. Midshipman Roger Staubach is Mr. Football on the collegiate scene in 1963. I was born in 1964 and so I used to tell people long as I'm alive Navy's not going to beat Notre Dame. Well I tell you what was really unique Roger Staubach was a great football player and a dynamic charismatic human being. There was never a game that Navy was out of when he was on the football field. A word from Annapolis now, Starbuck for Admiral. No, as a matter of fact, I was rooting for Navy back in those days. I was in the Navy for three years, so I was conflicted when I was at Notre Dame. I mean, I, I had two loyalties here. But when that was all going on, I knew the story, and I knew why we were still playing Navy. College football's longest continuous intersectional rivalry is renewed for the 38th time at John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia. I think we were a surprise team of the year. I didn't have any idea that we were going to win at 40 to nothing because Staubach was there and they had destroyed us the year before. Notre Dame sensational quarterback John Hewitt goes to work. But we had some magic with John Hewitt and uh, Jack Snow. And Snow takes it for the score. That was the signal that the uh, worm had turned and that the dominance was going to be on Notre Dame's side. And I don't know if anyone expected it to be an NCAA record 43 straight years where Notre Dame would be victorious in the series, even though there were many, many close calls along the way. Notre Dame trailing Navy, 2.17 left in the game. I remember being in that game. We were preached to that if you let these guys stay in the game, you're going to end up having more than more than you want in terms of a dogfight. Berline is sacked. And as that game went along, all those things come into play. You know, you start pressing a little bit more because you say, we cannot lose to these guys. We cannot, we cannot end the streak. Berline going deep, and it is complete. That is Tim Brown. You know, going into the game, that physically you're going to be able to to move them around probably a little better than you are other teams that you play. But you also know that this is going to be the most disciplined team that you're going to play all year. Happy bunch of midshipmen. I do remember ma making one great catch in that game. You know, it was a shoestring catch over the middle. Burline to throw again. Over the middle. Complete to Brown. 
all those games we played were very, very tough football games, no doubt about it, man. But we always loved it because we knew the challenge was going to be, it was like that 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 mental tune-up you needed to be be able to lock in and to uh, be able to go out, go out and play against other teams, man. When you play against Navy, you knew this was your challenge. And Carney's on there to try a 44-yard field goal. The kick is up, and it is... I'm very, very happy that I was not associated with the first loss in that streak, though. Those guys just played above and beyond. And it's like our wounded warriors. Those guys just never give up. They keep fighting. The military, it's in their bones. It's in their culture. It's in their heart and their soul and their mind. They just keep fighting. And they never quit. So now Navy has one more opportunity. We're playing one of our last home games here against the Naval Academy, and uh, we're up. The only result can be it's got to be in the end zone. Everything is feeling pretty good. You know, I'm starting to unstrap my chin strap, starting to celebrate. We're going to another bowl game automatically. And uh, we have a couple young guys in the secondary. As they threw up their Hail Mary, they landed at about the uh, 40. <laughs> and uh, they decided they want to get uh, – an interception. Well, the two run into each other almost like a cartoon, and the ball comes up in the middle of the air. Lo and behold, the Navy guy is still running for down for the Hail Mary. He catches the ball and takes off running. Luckily, I had a little speed on my side, and I caught the guy and pushed him out at the one-yard line. Oh, my Alabama goodness! At the one-yard line. Allen Rossum there for Notre Dame. The game is over. You know, the first thing I did after that play was got on the two guys who were trying to get an interception. So <laughs> I didn't really celebrate. I just kind of like, yo, what are you doing? Like, just knock the ball down, man. You know what? There was no pressure to keep that streak going when I was here because at that time we were much superior athletically than the Navy was, and, and we had been for a very, very long time. But, you know, as a fan and, and moving on after I left here, I saw that gap keep closing and closing and closing. 2003, we were playing against them, and we literally won on – the last kick of the game when the whistle blew. It's on the way. Put down. The kick is up. It bobbles. And it is good. And for the 40th consecutive year, Notre Dame has beaten Navy. You just got to be prepared mentally to play against a tough team like that. And if you're not, then you'll get beat. The Navy players fought their hearts out trying to break that 40 years of frustration. The streak added an element of pressure. Nobody wants to be on a team that ends the 43-year streak of victories. It was talked about. It was always talked about um, that, you know, we had this streak going and and, and you didn't want to be that team that that, that, that broke the streak. Oh, it's, it's a streak. I mean, it's 40 years, man. You don't want to be the team to, to you know, break that streak. I was worried. I don't want to be the coach that breaks that, what, 43-game winning streak that I felt greater pressure there than I did play in Michigan. You know, I know we can't beat Navy every year, but I just don't want it to be this year. And the midshipmen of Navy will gather next, and they're hoping this is the year they can finally break that long NCAA record losing streak to Notre Dame. In 2007, I was coaching offensive line for Coach Johnson. I had a great opportunity to be a part of the team that broke the streak. Thomas fighting, stopped, and this time it's official. The streak has ended at Notre Dame Stadium on November 3rd, 2007. For the first time since 1963, Navy has beaten Notre Dame. For us, it was a great accomplishment. Have it up there because they're hard to beat. It doesn't come too often. So, you know, we had to relish that one time we did beat them in 2007. You know, really was really happy for our, our team, our players. And I think just a big part of that picture just shows the jubilation of years of trying to get over the home. You know, our guys, this is it for them. You know, that's the feather in their cap, so to speak. The NFL dreams pretty much are over after their playing careers. And so to have an opportunity to beat a storied program like that was something I'm sure they'll never forget. streaks come to an end at some point. 
So I was happy for the Naval Academy and the people that support Navy because they're good fans. They're real good fans. Uh, but yeah, deep down, it, it hurt, you know, to see that streak uh, be ended. But yeah, it was disappointing. But at the same time, uh, you're happy for the Naval Academy, for those people, and have respect for them. Well, it was, it was a difficult game for us because we lost. But at the same time, there was such a mutual respect over those years and within that game that a sign of that respect was after the game, you know, they played their, their alma mater, their song. We went over behind behind them and, and um, as, as a sign of respect and thanks for what they do for us. The Navy players go before their band, their drum and bugle corps for the playing of Navy Blue and Gold, joined by the Notre Dame coaches and staff. I think that's one of my proudest moments as a, uh, a Notre Dame player to watch you know, Coach Weiss honor uh, and pay that amount of respect to the Naval Academy. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. Well, to me, when I see that, that just shows true honor to those guys and to everything that this rivalry means. You know, throughout all the years, whether who's up or down, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything to me because there's a mutual respect there. <laughs> Navy was the only team that we did that for. Um, and it always put things into perspective of, of what really matters and who we owe a lot to was our little way of saying thank you. For us, that's, that's a sign of sportsmanship, not only for us individually and us as a team, but as a university. And now the Navy players accompany the Notre Dame players in front of the student section of Notre Dame as the Notre Dame band will play the Notre Dame alma mater. And then you know, they reciprocated, did the same thing for us. So there's a mutual respect that, that, is, that is real. And it, I feel fortunate to have been able to experience that down on the field. This year we have a very unique opportunity. We have two of our schools playing to each other, Notre Dame and Navy. It's not the rivalry in a sense of teams that hate each other, it's teams that have mutual respect. And I think the teams really wanted to reflect that and, and do something different on the football field. Got the shamrock behind it with the, the two crossing anchors. Never before have two teams taken the field against each other, but worn the same apparel, same base layer, same footwear, same gloves. And beyond that, even to, to the next level, each team is gonna wear each other's alma mater on their sleeves of their base layer and on the palms of their gloves. The alma mater was super important to both schools because at the end of each contest they will go onto each other's side and actually sing each other's alma mater so because that's such a, an important part of this game we wanted to figure out a way to represent it on the actual apparel because there's such a mutual admiration between the two teams we wanted to find a way that they could get on the field and actually show their appreciation in a, in a, in a tangible way the operative words of respect and honor and tradition sportsmanship is really the most important thing and i think Win or lose, that's not that's not actually the most important aspect of this game. The, more, the, the biggest deal is that these two teams respect each other, they have history together, and they have admiration for each other. And I think, regardless of the outcome, that's what's most important. You know, it's cool too. We didn't really talk about it, but the the coaches are going to wear the same sideline apparel as well. So they're actually not going to wear team logos. They're going to wear the logo for the day is this this respect logo, which is pretty neat. So we have two teams playing against each other, two Under Armour teams, and that's really, you know, we, we live and breathe this sport. And it starts from the, the very, very top, Kevin Plank himself, and what an amazing story from his first visit ever to Notre Dame. That's one you have to hear. Yeah, so a really cool story about my relationship with Notre Dame. The first time I was in South Bend was actually September of 1997. Notre Dame had just redone the stadium they called the rededication game. And uh, they were actually opening up against Georgia Tech, who was my first client at Under Armour. And how better to start the football season than hopping in my 1992 uh, Ford Explorer with the cracked windshield and driving uh, whatever it was, a dozen hours to South Bend, Indiana, and uh, you know, thinking I was going to find a hotel room, let alone a hotel room I could afford, was not an option, where the equipment staff from Georgia Tech was very kind to invite me to just spend the night in the, the visiting team locker room at Notre Dame Stadium. So was there anything cooler than that? So to go from that moment all the way to fast forward 17 years. So it's a great honor for me on behalf of Father Jenkins 
and the University of Notre Dame to introduce our new partner, Under Armour and Kevin Plank. Jack, thank you so much and, and good morning everyone. This is, a, this is a pinch me moment for me without question. As cool as it was the 17 years from sleeping in that visiting locker room uh, all the way to today to actually being able to walk through the home team locker room, uh, that's, a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool moment. Rockney, Four Horsemen, Gipper, I mean, like, go down the line. You just must respect history. And it really leaves Under Armour, I think, with the responsibility is that we are caretakers of this tradition for a period of time. Hopefully that's as long as we can ever imagine, but I think we're incredibly respectful about what that means and, and honoring that tradition in everything we do, our approach, our product, our uniforms, and demonstrating the respect that Notre Dame deserves. And then to be able to have the, the privilege to outfit the incredible young men and women that make up the 4,400 midshipmen. You have to be there to really respect and understand the reverence that exists at the United States Naval Academy. huge honor being the proud provider of Navy athletics of what it means to live in a place where you know a kid can come from nothing and start a company with with pocket change and a couple credit cards and uh, today be sitting on be a three billion dollar company understanding that that moment is that we appreciate the fact that we at Under Armour we live under the blanket of protection that's provided by all of our armed forces and especially the Academy and for us to not let them down by saying we're not going to fall down as Under Armour because we didn't do a good enough job with our company. Midshipman is a big deal for us to be in your house today. You know, I keep my, my, my St. Christopher, my St. Christopher medal, it just says protect us. And so uh, it's good to know that you've got the, the people at places like um, uh, the Naval Academy that are working to fight for us. And it's good to know we have people at Notre Dame that are working to pray for us. So I don't know, somewhere along the line, we'll be okay between the two of them. South Bend is unlike any other stadium. There's a sense of history. There's a sense of respect there. I still remember my first game in 1995. Uh, you know, I gave this big pep talk to my players. Don't get caught up in the hype. It's just another stadium. Their field is just as big as everybody else's field. And I remember when I first came out, I was like, I mean, you're in awe of the stadium. What you can see from the stadium is uh, a picture of Jesus Christ, as they refer to as Touchdown Jesus. It shows you what their school is about, but it shows you just who their school is. I know that there are, you know, statues there that embody what their the values that they're trying to preach. Uh, just like here at our school. I think it's unique because the two organizations they operate by principles and and they have standards that permeate everything they do. Individuals that would go to the Naval Academy would be the ones that came from a very strong family, had good leadership, academics important to them, disciplines important to them. Well, those are the same qualities that we look for in a home on the people who came to Notre Dame. One, two, three! One, two, three! There's so many things that make that rivalry special. You're talking about two institutions that identify themselves with a certain level of character. And so there's a mutual respect between the two. The deeper meaning is, is really what it's all about. And these are guys that are making the, the, the commitment to serve our country. We understand that, we respect them for it. You still had that ultimate respect for them because you knew that their job was so much greater. You know, what they had committed to was so much greater than just a football game. Let's go! Football is very important to them, but these are also the people going to be protecting us for the next 30 years. Go Navy! 
Yeah, personally, I have a lot of ties with Navy. My dad went there, um, obviously. My, my uncle went there. My grandpa served in the Navy. So I have a really long family history of, of Naval, Naval Academy and Naval Service in general. I've been to Annapolis, the Naval Academy, and I love it there. So it's just cool to see how, although I went to Notre Dame, you know, I still feel like that connection and to see how, you know, we can go play this game competitively, but at the same time, when the game's over, go shake each other's hands, sing each other's fight songs, and, you know, be on the same team. I'm, you know, I'm really honored to be able to be a part of this tradition that's been going on for, you know, however many years now. It's probably one of those great things in college football that we have that relationship. And I think it's it's not just on the football field. I think it has to do with um, the longstanding relationship that the university and the academy have, that that has carried itself on to the playing field as well. And that respect is, is shown both on and off the field. Please welcome back to Notre Dame, Lou We had a great relationship with Davey, and let's also remember this, that we had great respect for them. I think they had great respect for us at Notre Dame. And the history, you know, we play Navy every year. Some people were saying, get him off the schedule. And that was not going to happen as long as Father Hesburgh and Father Joyce were there, because they had a lot of respect for Navy, and when Navy was down, we didn't kiss them off. You can tell um, that they have a great amount of pride for what the Navy has done for their school and, you know, and the history behind that and keeping them afloat. And I, to be honest with you, I know in my position, I'm grateful that they've kept the series alive. Uh, even though they probably could do other things, it might be economically more beneficial for them. Division one sports is a big business. Everybody wants to play Notre Dame. And so they could use this game and this one opp opportunity to do other things to help their program. But they've been true to their word as far as this game is important to them. Mm -hmm.